the cruiserweight category has always lingered in the shadow of its big brother, the heavyweight division. Bright and renowned boxers, if they appeared here at all, did so only briefly. Often, the first heavyweight class served as a springboard for talented boxers who later went on to conquer the royal division. Examples are not hard to find. Legendary names like Evander Holyfield, James Tony, David Hay, and Alexander Usyk come to mind. Great masters who made a mark in the weight class up to 90.7 kilograms can be counted on one hand. In addition to the mentioned boxing talents, one name that is often unjustly overlooked is O'Neill Bell. And the dramatic story of this man deserves more than one page. O'Neill Bell was born on December 29, 1974, in the sunny Jamaican city of Montego Bay. The boy was born into a simple working-class family. To support the family, Bell's father went to work in the USA. When O'Neill was five years old, his father sent him a gift that differed from previous ones, a pair of boxing gloves. According to the boy's mother, he simply became infatuated with boxing. In 1982, the family moved permanently to the United States to be closer to the father. The father, a big boxing enthusiast, often told his son about great champions like Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard. Young Bell dreamed of the day when he could adorn his waist with a championship belt. His amateur career was quite successful. The young man twice became the winner of the popular American tournament Golden Gloves. The transition to helmetless bouts did not take long. Bell needed money to support his wife and young daughter. The debut of the incredibly gifted Jamaican in the professional ring took place in February 1998, when he was knocked out in the first round by another newcomer, William Holyfield, the nephew of the legendary Evander Holyfield. He hurt the older Williams and would finish him off with a TKO in round number But in the next bout, in the fourth round, Bell himself was knocked out after a blow from someone named Mohammed Ben Gassimi. To surrender and despair is the fate of the weak. Our protagonist, with a resilient character and strong spirit, was not one to be discouraged. It was these qualities, combined with an aggressive style and considerable punching power, not characterized by serious school that allowed the Jamaican to find his place under the sun. After the first career setback, Bell embarked on an impressive winning streak, methodically paving his way to the Boxing Olympus. The first serious test came in July 2001. The bout with the sturdy American southpaw Jason Robinson, in which both boxers tasted the canvas, was tough and tenacious. However, Bell emerged victorious with a well-deserved unanimous decision, 96-92, 97-92, and 97-91. With a good, crisp flurry. And I'm going to make a Muhammad Ali George Foreman reference here that he was like, oh, how can you compare it? But it kind of reminded me of those mid-round flurries. Oh, and there, there goes go. Robinson with the left that knocks down O'Neal Bell. That's it, the left hand, but it started with that with that Ali-esque flurry off the ropes where a guy's kind of like Foreman. In the fight, it looked like Bell was going to walk through him. Rocking him with right hands, and Robinson didn't seem to have too many answers. And the, the round three was more of Bell until Robinson came up with an answer in the form of a left uppercut with his back to the corner that totally changed the momentum of the fight. And the fourth was more of the same, back and forth action. Robinson knocks Bell down coming off the ropes. That's a two-point round. There's Bell doing more business, and then Robinson countering the right hands with the left hand. Left hook off the wrong foot. Plus it was a straight right hand, and I just didn't see the left hand, and I just didn't see it off the angle. And, and then towards the end of the fight became much more mauling and then much more mauling than brawling. But it was in September, he finished the experienced former world champion Arthur Williams in the 11th round. A frustrating technical draw with journeyman Ernest Mateen was overshadowed by five consecutive early victories. Among them, the rematch success against Williams stands out. 
After that, he knocked out the future champion Kelvin Davis, solid ex-contender Derek Harmon, and the dangerous puncher Ezra Sellers. The path to the championship title was open. On May 20th, 2005, at the age of 30, O'Neill captured the vacant IBF world title by defeating Canadian Dale Brown. The bout went the distance and ended with a unanimous decision. Judges scored it 115-113, 116-112, and 117-111 in favor. title he was in that position now he's on top bell tries to fight out of the jam he hasn't hurt O'Neill bell any good oh. right hand comes in from bell and brown goes back great comeback in this fourth round from o'neill bell dale brown still very game very active and <laughs> Last 20 seconds, mouthpiece has hit the canvas. Armando Garcia's letting it go. O'Neill Bell needs something here. Dale Brown, 10 seconds for the rest of your life. It was worthy of being called a champion. And new IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Oh, Neil! Give him hell! Bang! I am telling you right uh, now. Oh my. In the first title defense, he was brutally knocked out in the 11th round by Sebastiano Rothman. With such a setback, the Jamaican entered a bout for the undisputed world champion title against WBC and WBA title holder Jean-Marc Marmac. WBA, it's a rematch of a tremendous fight that took place. The WBC supervised. The opinion of analysts and ordinary fans was almost unanimous. Physically strong, possessing a powerful punch and, most importantly, experienced at the highest level, the Frenchman should not have had many problems with Bell. Jean-Marc's list of victories was indeed impressive. In just three years, Mormec defeated the legendary Virgin Hill twice, former European champion Alexander Gurov and Dale Brown. Everyone rightly believed that if Bell could go the distance with Mormec without being knocked out, it would be a significant achievement for him. The first bout for the undisputed cruiserweight championship in 18 years took place on January 7, 2006. The fighters started the match without warming up, indicating their intention not to leave the decision to the judges. In the lively exchanges, the more seasoned Frenchman looked preferable. You could have many twists and turns with these two boxers, and both of them have tools that they have available. And Mormec is hittable. Well, we wondered when would it break into a fight. How about the first round? Yeah. And Mormec really going to work. Good shots to the chin of Bell. Oh, a big left hand. It snaps Bell's head back on the rope. Has the physical advantage, and he has that very attack on the inside. In the second round, the audience gasped for the first time, anticipating an imminent outcome. Mormec's powerful uppercut knocked Bell's cap off and stunned him to the core. However, Bell weathered the surprise with honor. The rest of the round again featured mutual sharp exchanges. He blocks a lot of the shots, they don't land flush, and we see his body punching it evidence there. Mormec, with, Mormec also has a very good uh, right hand, but it's Bell. Beck comes for Mormec. And again, not where you want to be for Bell on the ropes. In spite of the short size of Mormec, you're asking for this, diminishing some of the power. You can't get away with that against Mormec. Big body shot by Mormec. 
for uh, Mormek, who's been very busy. Wear you out. Wear out Mormek, but Mormek comes battling back. I think he's stunned on the other Some tough shots, and it was Mormek with his back to the ropes. There's an uppercut in the left hand. Another straight right. John March's relentless pressure continued to yield results. In the fourth round, he again powerfully rocked O'Neill. But even when dazed, the latter continued to hold his ground, responding with sharp counterattacks. That snap, Bell's head back. Bell in trouble in the corner. He's felt the wrath, the power, but then he comes right back with a, a pair of right hands. This is the charm of O'Neill Bell as a fighter. Every fight is filled with drama and adversity for him. And yet, it has been nonstop action from the opening bell and a right uppercut. Well, these are really vicious body shots by John Mark Mormek. In the fifth round, the Jamaican looked more favorable. Mormek, fantastically self assured and too focused on a knockout victory, began to rapidly lose strength. He waved Bell in, but will Bell take the bait? And remember, Bell, a guy who could change a fight with one punch, he can turn things around instantly. But speaking of being turned around, so physically strong. Bell is, is somewhat awkward, which can work to his advantage. It might be bothering him. Excellent fight. This is really a great fight. Bell may have lost his mouthpiece again, and I'm not sure the ref winning a decision. So there have been fights, and now he's getting whacked around by, and hurt by Bell. Yeah, he is. Remember, he's never been down as a pro. He's run out of gas, and he's accepting body shots. Oh, then he comes back. Even Mormek's best punches couldn't break the Jamaican spirit, who slowly but surely led the bout towards victory. The impressive culmination of this fantastic fight occurred in the 10th round. Bell's furious combination sent the bookmaker's favorite to the canvas until the end of the referee's count. Smacking Mormek all over the place, there goes Mormek's mouthpiece. And Mormek's in trouble. Bell smothering him, he goes down for the first time in his career. Crumbles to the canvas. I don't think he's gonna make it. Wait, it's Kelly waves it out. It's over. Here. as we look at it again, is how accurate he was with his punches, how he picked his spots, and for the most part, didn't rush his punches. He's weighing his options here and looking to hit Mormek. Mormek getting very low, which made him a tough target. That's why some of those punches landed on the back and top of the head, which of course is more dangerous. And that right hand may have been the one that really did, did in Mormek, and then that right hand on the top of the head, obviously. I am immensely happy. This victory allowed me to inscribe my name alongside the great Holyfield. Of course, I won't achieve everything Holyfield did, but now the name O'Neill Bell will be known to all. Mormex promoter Don King did not rush with a rematch. It took place in March 2007, and interestingly, it happened in France. During this period, Bell had already relinquished the IBF title, refusing to face mandatory challenger Steve Cunningham. And after a tough and vibrant rematch with Jean-Marc, the Jamaican lost the two remaining titles as well. All three judges gave the victory to the local boxer, twice 115-113 and 116-112.
coup de Jean-Marc. Ces coups qui sont arrivés. Il était pratiquement KO debout. Il était. Oh là là. Attention, il va se jeter. C'est à lui de récupérer maintenant. Attention, monte les mains. Oh, je fais le combat avec lui, mais c'est souvent le cas. Il avance, c'était Bayard Bouchoukour. Avance, c'était Brahim Asloum. Je boxe avec lui, monte les mains. Monte les mains. Oui. Oui. On oh, oh, est très fatigué, jean -Marc. Il est très oui, fatigué. Oui, oui, attention. Que ça va être Allez, Allez Jean-Marc, levez les mains. Levez les mains. Ah, il ne faut pas que tout s'effondre sur un coup. Allez Jean-Marc, c'est super Ça va faire notre deuxième champion du monde. Et c'était pas évident, et c'était très compliqué. Et normalement, dans 20 secondes, 20 secondes, c'est fini. Ouais, bébé, 20 euh, secondes, allez, c'est terminé. C'est terminé. Ouais terminé. Champion du monde. Allez, deuxième champion du monde. Bon mec est allé au Et bout de lui. Le rêve était brisé. Oh, mesdames, messieurs, ce soir, le nouveau champion du monde. WBA, WBC, des Il de l'a fait. Jean-Marc Il l'a fait. The post-fight press conference was marred by a nasty brawl provoked by Bell. After the defeat, O'Neill began to undergo alarming changes in his behavior. Outbursts of uncontrollable aggression started to occur. It reached the point where the boxer became abusive towards his life partner, Ashley. He scares me. He has an empty look. Like the devil, the girl said in an interview. His return to the ring took place in April 2008. For this, Bell went to Poland, where he clashed with former heavyweight world champion Thomas Adamek. Already in the first round, the pole sent Bell to the canvas, but the latter managed to regroup and subsequently looked quite competitive. Adamek caught Bell over the top with the right hand. Perfect timing throughout the course of this fight. Leave that left hand down and you will pass. But as I was saying last round, then as a light heavyweight. That has been more accurate than that of Bell. It'll be a slip. And that's when you have to fire. See where Adamic fired that jab and then left it down. That was O'Neill Bell's chance. Adamic Despite the memory of that knockdown in round one where he just walked in and got dropped. Jab and a right hand by Adamic because he beat Bell down again. And that's one thing if you could... Now he's trying to cut off the ring against Adamic who falls for the second time. So that won't be... When he gets a lead, he doesn't give it back. He gets moving. And if it's left hook at a right hand by Adamic missing, but Bell backing off. Right hand missing by Bell. Right hand by Bell manages to score. The undisputed turn of events occurred after the seventh round when Bell, for no apparent reason, refused to come out for the eighth round. And O'Neill Bell up already, talking to the referee, and there's a not get his speed going. Round six and seven, he slowed down tremendously, and uh, he was crawling in a sense compared to what he'd done earlier. And for Tomas Adamic. An emotional victory. Bell did not step into the ring for a full three years. In June 2011, he fought compatriot Richard Hall, who repeatedly contended for championship titles in the past. It was believed that Bell should confidently pass Hall, but the result of the fight put a bold period in O'Neill's career as a top boxer. 
Hall knocked out the former undisputed world champion in the second round. His return to the ring in December of the same year was inconspicuous. A victory in the first round against a fighter with a record of 17-20. This was Bell's last appearance in the ring. His final record consists of 27 victories, 25 by knockout, 4 losses, and 1 draw. Problems outside the ring persisted. A doctor diagnosed Bell with bipolar disorder. However, he refused to take the prescribed medication. Outbursts of uncontrollable aggression continued. The tragic end of the life of the former undisputed world champion occurred in November 2015. Exiting a bus, Bell became the victim of an armed robbery, succumbing to gunshot and stab wounds. He was only 40 years old. In the memory of boxing fans, he will remain a bright and unique boxer. Unfortunately, he couldn't overcome his inner demons. In the history of the cruiserweight division, as of now, only three people have managed to wear the honorary title of undisputed world champion. Evander Holyfield, Alexander Usyk, and O'Neill Bell. And perhaps the name of the Jamaican boxer will be immortalized in the International Boxing Hall of Fame in the future. Rest in peace, champion.